Hey guys, Matthew here. In today's video, I'm going to bring you guys an update on the project for predicting profitability. Uh, so we've done the first sample of maps of 400 maps. And uh, essentially, this was focusing on essences, strong boxes, and metamorph. And I, I do want to say uh, that I took all of my data and I uh, went to other content creators to compare. And it does seem that our odds and the weightings that we came out with are very, very accurate or pretty much uh, exactly the same as what other people got in terms of their results over the course of playing the league. Um, so I can say with a fair degree of certainty that these uh, these actual numbers that I'm going to be sharing with you guys are very, uh, very accurate. I do want to say, however, that right now, uh, the profit, the profitability and what, whatever I'm going to talk about in this video has not yet been uh, actually incorporated as part of the casual exile guide, but we will get to it. I just was really excited and wanted to share some of the results uh, because I think that's just some pretty cool findings. Um, so let's get right into it. Again, uh, this is all going to be data, which is updated live or, you know, with an interval of say every four to six hours, something like that. Um, so you can tell at any point of the league, how good a certain mechanic is. So over the course of my 400 maps, um, now, one thing about essences is that you don't actually get essences anywhere else than just the free nodes on the Atlas currently. Uh, there is a sextant that you could use, however. And the cool thing about actually figuring out the weighting of the essences and how much total we got over the course of a certain amount of maps is that it makes it pretty easy to be able to... Uh, I guess do the math on whether you you should or shouldn't use the sextant without actually having to retest it now one thing however about essences is that you're not getting one essence only per map because you also have the chance for essences to be there um i guess you could say naturally which is probably about 12 percent like any other league mechanic but you also have um the, the the additional nodes which can give you more essences so I'm going to go ahead and do the math on it. I haven't done it yet. This was on a per map basis, but the goal for me is to try to figure out the profitability of a per essence basis, which is what I did with strong boxes and metamorph. Uh, but for essences, we're just not quite done with it. Uh, but as you can see per map over the course of 400 maps, uh, by turning all my screamings into shrieking essences, because the reality is no one's really going to buy your screaming essences at the POE Ninja prices, which is like one C each. It's just never going to happen. Uh, so it's a lot more realistic to turn them into shrieking, sell them in bulk. Uh, 4.57 C at current time of, uh, you know, me recording this video, which is not bad at all because there is zero investment other than the nodes on the tree. You don't have to, you don't have to do anything. You just pick up the nodes, you go in every single map you're going to make on average 4.57 chaos. Note that this is without corrupting the essences. I'm currently rerunning another 400 maps worth of essences as part of another test, my sample number two. Uh, but in this case, I'm actually corrupting the meds essences, which is um, uh, misery, envy, dread, and scorn in order to try to get things like horror or hysteria and stuff like that. Uh, because TLDR, I do think that it's going to be profitable, but I did want to get a test with and without. Uh, but you can see, and this might be a bit surprising, but the odds of getting any essence is actually pretty much the same for no matter which type, other than for the purple essences or meds. Those do seem to be a little bit rarer uh, than your average essences, but all the other ones do seem to have roughly the same drop rates, which is really, really nice because it makes uh, doing the math on them pretty easy. Um, and it also means that we can very easily do... Uh, uh, a prediction of profitability if they're all weighted the same, which they really seem to be. And again, we've compared the data with other people who have done some pretty big sample size, in some cases even better, bigger than mine, and that seems to be pretty much the case. Okay, looking at Metamorph. Now, Metamorph was interesting because there was a lot going on. Uh, now, I used the Rusted Metamorph Scarab for my testing, and I did 400 maps, but with the nodes on the tree, uh, we actually get 800 Metamorphs. So this is some pretty reliable data. We can see that the Catalysts, uh, are are um, are pretty decently weighted. The accelerating and unstable are significantly rarer than anything else. But after that, you have tempering, fertile, and prismatic at about a three point five percent. You have noxious, abrasive, turbulent, and imbued at about fourteen point five. And then finally, intrinsic, which is significantly more common than anything else, is about twice as much as the further ones. Or actually, it's exactly twice. Um, so over the course of the map, I uh, over the course of my four hundred maps or eight hundred metamorphs, I found two thousand three hundred and seventy five catalysts. And I did this, uh, I compared it with somebody who had over 4,000 in their stash, and they had basically the exact same percentages. So I can say with a fair degree of certainty, once again, that this data is fine. Now, one thing that I do want to mention when it comes to things like Metamorph and, and strong boxes and every other league mechanic going forward is that I'm removing a lot of stuff. I'm mostly only keeping things that are consistent, which is going to be things like maps, things like 
for example, metamorph with catalyst, right? Uh, and then uh, things like currency. So for example, over the course of my metamorphs, I got a bunch of like, you know, random scarabs here and there. I got a bunch of essences here and there, right? I got a bunch of league mechanics uh, mixed in, uh, inside of it and I removed all of it. Now by removing all of it, it does make the, the, the mechanic itself seem worse than it is, but what it does do is it adds consistency. And I'd rather showcase the numbers to you guys and be like, this is the bare minimum that you can expect. It's going to be more because it doesn't include anything else that you could possibly get from the rewards, right? Like essences, like scarabs, um, like anything like that. It's all excluded uniques as well. All excluded. All of it. Uh, so then you know the act the absolute bare bones money that you can expect from that mechanic And again because it's going to be updated live It's gonna be very easy for you to decide which mechanics you think are the best Especially based on your farming are you go for some speed some speed mapping metamorph is good for that or Are you going for some ultra juicing the metamorph might not be the play for you? But anyways look at the, the data per per cat uh, per metamorph, right? So we have two in each map we are making a two chaos uh, or just about two chaos per metamorph killed and this is from the catalyst alone uh, for a total of four chaos per map the price of a metamorph scarab right now is something like a third of a chaos so you're making like 12 times your money just off a of catalyst now including everything else minus the things that i said i removed so i only kept like currency maps and uh, also the catalyst now one thing to note about the maps is that i actually removed all the maps that were less than the tier that i was farming so I was farming tier 16, so any map below that, T15 and below, were removed from the sample. Uh, and again, for that, it's just about consistency. I didn't want to put a bunch of maps um, at random prices, uh, you know, because obviously those are going to change a lot. So what we did is we counted only T16 maps and only at one chaos each. Uh, and the reason for that is because obviously map prices are going to differ greatly on which map it is, but it's never really going to be worth less than one chaos. Matter of fact, it's always going to be worth quite a bit more than that. But again, I want to showcase it as worse than it is, not as better than it is, so that when you do it, you will always make minimum what is listed here. Okay, so over the course of my 800 metamorphs, on average, uh, including everything else minus the things that I removed, it was 7 chaos per metamorph or 14 chaos per map. At this point, you're making like 40 times your investment from a rusted metamorph scarab. That is pretty crazy. And metamorph in maps don't actually take any additional time than just building it, killing it, rebuilding it, rekilling it. There's a bit of a downtime there, uh, but we're talking about 30 seconds, uh, which is pretty damn crazy. All right, looking, all right, it's actually probably more like 20 seconds, but anyways. Now looking at catalyst plus everything, but minus lucky drops. So lucky drops would be things like, for example, exalted orbs. Um, those were removed and other divination cards. Like I think there was like one abandoned wealth or something like that. Like there was really nothing that was kept uh, that was too, too lucky um, because I don't think I got particularly lucky. Uh, without the exalts and all that, we're looking at about seven chaos per map and this is not including the organs so if we were to include the organs right now you can actually sell them for about 3c each but that's just because of a challenge in the league most other leagues you probably wouldn't be able to sell them but if you remove the organs and the lucky drops you're at seven so just about eight chaos currently per map uh, with an investment of 0 0.3 chaos and not only that if you guys can't see it right here but uh the actual of me i did 280 uh, combined metamorphs in the Tains laboratory and over 280 metamorph which is what I was able to create from 800 metamorphs killed in maps is about six chaos average per big metamorph killed uh, so that means that if you add that back on to the minus the lucky drops the price of the organs will basically make up for the uh, the the actual removing of the lucky drops so if you were to count the organs and the lucky drops you would actually be looking at about 20 chaos profit per map uh, after killing your uh, you're, uh, you're co combining the, the metamorphs. So there's quite a bit of money to be made there, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Uh, overall, metamorph was surprisingly good. And note that right now, catalysts are down in the gutter. They're extremely cheap. I remember at the start of the league, I bought some intrinsic catalysts for like 1C each. And currently, they're valued at much worse than that, right? Uh, so... Um, there's there's a lot more currency to be made in things like metamorphs early league it's also really good for maps as you can see when maps are expensive 152 maps that is just from killing the metamorph right so every other map you're going to get a map back and this doesn't include any of the monsters you kill inside the map so it's pretty pretty good okay now finally let's look at the strong box data over the course of 400 maps i opened up 3600 or 3200 strong boxes now some of them were able to be opened multiple times so it's probably more around 3600 strong boxes but we don't really have to worry about that at all uh, i got 203.5 uh 
operative strong boxes. Now, why are you wondering about 0.5? It's not that I've counted them. It's that I looked at the odds of getting an operative strong box on the tree, which is just 6%. So it's easy. You do this times 0 0.06. And there you go. You'll end up with how many operative strong box I opened on average. Um, and we can look at the rusted scarabs that I got and the things like polish and the things like gilded and wing scarabs and then everything else. Overall, it came out to be, uh, I'm sure you can see at the bottom here, it came out to be that on average per map, I was making 19.63 chaos worth of uh, of money from uh, scarabs, or sorry, from strong boxes. And I was investing seven chaos. So I was roughly just about tripling my money. Now the operative strong boxes on average were netting me about 39 chaos every time I would encounter one of them. So you can see that there is quite a bit of money to be made from the actual operative strong boxes. They drop a ton of gilded, not many wings, but a lot of polish and a lot of gilded. Note that in this data here, we have used, uh, we have removed all of the bad stuff. So for example, rusted bestiary scarab, rusted elder, rusted, we actually removed them from the data set just because they're worthless. However, in a league start scenario, potentially some of these could be worth. It's very easy for me to go ahead and just remove this bad that you can see here and all of a sudden they would be activated again uh so in the leak start scenario it's possible that we'll have to edit some of this by just well, deleting bad and all the all of a sudden it'll be back in the calculations uh so it's the same thing for essences uh for example actually not essences because we we made them all shrieking but it's the same thing for example the catalysts as you can see we we wrote bad for imbued because nobody ever buys imbued um so because of that, you know, we only kept the ones that we consider sellable. And this is based on experience, right? My experience. Uh, but per strong box that you click in a map right now, it's 2.45 chaos, which is not bad at all, uh, considering, you know, it takes two seconds to actually click a, star, a strong box. And per operatives that you'll click, so every 6% chance, uh, it'll be about 40 chaos worth of value. So this is pretty much how we're going about it. Uh, you know, right now I'm doing essences, but with corrupting of the nodes, I'm also doing heists. Uh, I'm picking up all the stuff for heist, basically from the, uh, use, utilizing the sextant that guarantees it. But also, I'm also picking up the stuff from heist that's not from the sextant. So I'll be able to, uh, look at if I had the heist nodes on the tree, but I didn't have the sextant, how much money can I expect to make out of those nodes? And if I had the heist nodes on the tree and I'm using the sextant, how much money can I expect to make? So basically, is it worth to use the sextant? I'm doing Harbinger with the sextant and I'm gonna do another set without the sextant. Um, but overall, pretty much everything that I've tested so far has been pretty good. Over the course of my 400 maps from this test, I made over 200 exalt profit. Uh, and that was without picking up anything that wasn't from the three league mechanics that I just mentioned, strong boxes, metamorph, and essences, right? Nothing else was picked up in the map. If a regular monster was dropping me like a chaos, I would just leave it on the ground. Uh, so you can expect to make quite a bit of money. And this was super, super easy, right? We're talking about strong boxes, doesn't add any difficulty to your map. Metamorphs are actually a little bit annoying, but once you get to the end game, they're pretty easy. It's just while, while you progress that they're pretty annoying. Uh, and then essences are very easy as well. So... I can't wait to actually uh, implement this in the Casual Exile document so you guys can see in real time how much you can expect to make on a per mechanic basis. So on a per strong box, on a per metamorph, on a per, uh, you know, uh, per harbinger, per this, per that, whatever it may be. Uh, so I hope you guys are as excited as I am about this project. Uh, we're going to keep going forward. I'll keep updating you guys once in a while over how things are going and the data sets that we're running. Um, but yeah, that's going to be pretty much it for this video. Before I go, as always, do want to say a huge thank you to my supporters, so Russ Curl, Brandon, welcome back, Thomas Moss, uh, Nate the Great Master, Alex, Tim, Mercury, Johnny, as well as Navgar, Solomonk, Exo, Jera Costa, and Bizzin, anybody else who has supported me in the past, anyone else who wishes to remain anonymous. Again, huge thank you guys for the support, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.